there is this element that governments in developing countries we see that our lives are heavily impacted by technology uh, and yet many people in the world in underdeveloped countries and developing countries don't have any access to any of these technologies mm -hmm. what measures should be taken by the governments of developed countries perhaps even companies in developed countries to help those countries that are developing to be able to catch up and not be left behind true yeah but this is a bit similar to what i was saying before about the global north and south right that you can see that almost all the development takes place in the global north and and then yeah the global south is left a bit like is quite much left behind <laughs> and maybe even there's there's even some research that that says that maybe sometimes even it could be that the the global south countries could be used maybe as a way like as a testing place but that would be like rather unethical <laughs> in many in many aspects so yeah i think like that maybe this like w w perhaps i don't know if it should come from the global north but already the maybe the governments from the global south should uh start thinking how how can we how can they use these systems for a democratic way always like <laughs> not to make this like the current uh, authoritarian systems even worse and and maybe even also like same thing like having it as as part of education and maybe even have initiatives maybe from the global north to to promote this education i would say that rather than bring the systems it's better to rather help teaching about the systems or helping them develop them how to use it i know i know that there's like this experiment or this saying that says that don't you know like don't give a man a fish like teach them how to fish right so maybe we should apply the same principle here instead of like giving the technology there like maybe it's better to explain uh, the means on how to obtain it but of course this technology is also like uh, very expensive to build um, not only because of the actually the materials that are used because many of them use like very like rare for example minerals which are expensive but also the ways to train them since you need to train them many of them on a lot of data and a lot of quality data that requires like a lot of energy and resources and and maybe that could mean that some countries don't have the capacity for that so it will in that sense create more inequalities but i think that there is this and uh, maybe i'm slightly too optimistic <laughs> but there is this of course this very negative side of more authoritarianism and more control over the citizens uh and incursion upon the privacy but could this could the world governments in developing countries and democracies try to give this uh, ai capabilities perhaps uh, many of them are cloud-based so they give access to them as some sort of aid so basically they give access to them uh, to developing countries so that they could uh, improve efficiency and fight corruption and they're very good at and efficient for going through massive amounts of data and help become more efficient in the processes. And we see that, for example, I think the Gates Foundation is working with uh, electrical grids in Africa mm -hmm. uh, and improving electrical grids. So we mm -hmm. see that there are those glimpses of if it's specifically directed towards certain sectors th it can truly bring some positive effects i think potentially yeah but it could potentially also happen that um maybe the some of the things that we create in in the in the global north are not applicable to global south i know for example there's like a study i read like some years ago from this from the fact conference that they discussed the concept of fairness i think it was in the us versus in india because they said that this main concept of how to distribute the, for example, like resources in a country in a fair way, it could take like, it, it could be debated, like there's no one way to do it. So then I wonder if it could happen also that maybe other systems that are made for a specific context, perhaps it it's not, doesn't necessarily translate that well in other contexts. So it depends a lot on which kind of AI yeah, system we are talking about. Um, I know, for example, there's like even issues with like um, not only with ethical principles, but for example, languages. Like maybe a system that you know, like it's using one language, maybe you translate it and it's not translatable exactly the same. So 
it requires some work. It's not impossible, but it, it definitely requires like, um, I would say like underst- very much like understanding of the context that we are, that we want to implement these EA systems on. It's possible, but yeah, it just, I would say it's not as easy as to say like, okay, I'm just using the system in Sweden, I will use it in Gambia. I think like, yeah, we should really consider the kind of situation that we have there, like political context, historical context, uh, environmental context. Yeah, it's so a bit more complex. Slightly more home-based situation, but it's tailored to each uh, country. Exactly, yeah. Maybe the fundamentals could be the same, but then it should be more trained or better, like optimized or improved for each specific scenario. 